Hi, I'm ADC Autotech. I understood that reference. Damn, am I enjoying this green screen so much. I'm still learning some stuff about it, but this is cool. Let's go with the video. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. My name is ADC Autotech, and welcome back to a brand new coloring book video. Today, we are going to be coloring in something that has been crazily highly suggested. And um, firstly, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone for the support on these videos. It's been absolutely amazing. Every one of these videos in this series has done incredible. Me and Bob. Both thank you very much. Bob, say thanks. Bob, don't talk. So yeah, this has been the most requested thing for me to bring into this series since I began it. And in the past, we've done some stuff from The Lion King, we've done Star Wars, we've even done something from the best franchise out there. What? BAM! The Avengers. Damn, what an amazing franchise. Honestly, these movies are incredible and really I don't have anything to say about them other than they're just amazing. Today we're going to be flicking through this lovely The Avengers Endgame coloring book by Centum. And uh, this cost me a little bit more. This was a four pounds coloring book. So it's a little bit more expensive than my usual coloring book budget, which is about two euros. I'm cheap like that. And we're going to be flicking through this, seeing if we can find any nice images. I have no idea right now who we're going to be coloring in, but hey, that's why we got this. We're going to look for it and see what we do now um yeah question today is well dc or marvel whose side of the fence are you on and bonus question will be who is your favorite character with all that said let's get on with this did you guys see that what the hell was that that flew past me all right so here we have our marvel avengers endgame coloring fun book so this is a coloring in book and uh yeah sorry if there's any glare here i'm gonna do my best to keep it glare free um, we're gonna flick through this right now and see if we can find any images to work with now on the front here you have a lovely collection of images that are quite photogenic they are really high quality these are not colored in by pencil or pen uh, they're pretty much digital images and they look really cool the challenge today is we are gonna select an image in this book and hopefully replicate the style achieved on the front now that is going to be incredibly difficult given that the paper standards of coloring books are pretty low so let's take a look through this and see if we can find any images. Now, given the title of this video, you probably already know who I'm going to choose, but I don't know right now. So we're just going to flick through this and see what we find. Um, I have had a brief look through this, so I have an idea, but I haven't really looked at everything. So let's just have a quick look through and see what we've got. Now, looking on the front page here, we have Iron Man. Now, Iron Man is a fan favorite character from the MCU, and he's actually one of my favorite characters too. We also have a reference of him on the cover right here, which could be useful. So if we do decide to do Iron Man, we do have this reference right here, and the difference between this reference and this one is obviously the black lines and the black shaded in areas. That's gonna make it a little bit difficult to achieve anywhere near this quality, so we're not really gonna be able to do that, but I wonder what would happen if we put this style of coloring, this kind of work, onto this what would it look like i think it looked pretty cool we will probably implement our own style into this as well let's just have a look through and see what we've got though I think we're actually going to set one Iron Man. I think Iron Man was, for me, probably going to be the most difficult one and the most challenging one. And um, if you know me by now, I like to challenge myself a little bit too much. So this is going to be quite ambitious, but let's get on with this. And I do hope you enjoyed the video. I will, throughout this video, commentate and talk you through what I'm doing at certain times. So please do sit back and enjoy this video. Yay! <laughs> Okay, so starting things off, we are going to begin by basing down some colors. Now, I'm going to be using my alcohol pro markers and brush markers here. The reason I'm doing this is because, as I'm sure you're all aware, children's sketchbooks aren't the best quality paper. They are very difficult to work with, especially with pencils. So what we're doing here is I'm going to base a nice layer of marker and we're going to build upon this using pencils. When you use pencils on their own, you sort of get the whiteness of the paper showing through it. You can never get a full coverage with this kind of paper. So adding this base color just gives a neutral base all over tone. So anything I build on top of this, I might get some graininess from the pencil itself, but it won't take away from the color that this object is supposed to be. Case in point, this is red and yellow. So we kind of want to keep those colors showing through. Now when I layer these colors, I actually like, now this is my own preference, I should say that. I actually like to layer down with one sort of light color and then one a little bit darker. Now sometimes I will use the same color twice, just use it as a sort of 
double layered thing. And that is just for me to give myself a nice guide on where the shadows are going to be. You don't have to do this step. I just find it makes it a little bit easier when I go to those darker areas. It's just in my mind, I know what I'm doing. And also, same point with just layering down the colors in general, it sort of gives me a nice base for those shadows. Now with every one of these, I am constantly changing my mind. I always select the colors that I believe I need to use. And maybe this will come as some consolation to people who just struggle to choose colors. I really don't know what I'm doing. I just pick up the darkest color, so I'll pick up a black or like a really dark garnet or something uh, because I'm using the reds and I'll just play them off each other and I'll just start to build colors that I think look like red. I'm not the best at selecting colors to be honest. So I just keep layering it until I've got the effect that I want. But yeah, ultimately the two areas you really want to focus on are the darkest shadows and the lightest areas. That is the key to doing this type of stuff. Everything in between doesn't really matter too much. We have our red base, doesn't really matter but it's those two areas, the darkest and the lightest, that are the most important for me to focus on. While looking at this piece, you'll probably notice that many of the areas that were apparent in the photo reference were not there in this coloring book reference. Now that is a common thing with coloring books. They usually dumb them down quite a bit. They remove some of the details. They take out some of the lines just to uncomplicate things. Just so it's a little bit easier for you when you look at it and it doesn't look too scary or overwhelming. So what we have to do along the way, unlike before in my previous ones where I used a fine liner to put those lines in, this time I'm gonna be using all pencils. So I'm gonna be adding in those details using the pencils. And the reason I'm doing that is because of the coloring style I'm going for here. If I use a fine liner, it will throw off the color. It's a very difficult thing to do and I'm gonna try my best here. So while this video is running, I just want to talk a little bit about the fears of artists and the sort of fear of this. I do get nervous about stuff like this. Some of these tasks are very daunting. Now, previous episodes, we just tackled some very basic images and there wasn't so much pressure for me to get them accurate or correct. Whereas with this, his entire suit is sort of chromed. The colors are extremely vibrant. There are so many things going on here and you do have to sacrifice some of that. You do have to say to yourself, right, there is no way I'm going to be able to match that chrome. There's no way I'm going to get those reflections in there. There's just so many limits that I do have placed on myself here. Not only from my abilities as an artist, but also the paper, the way that this is limiting me in what I can and cannot do. Okay, I briefly mentioned the pens I was using, but I think it is important for me to be clear about the utensils I am using in these videos. So what I'm using here is for the base colors, I was using my Winsor & Newton brush and pro markers. Now the simple reason for using these over say Copics, which a lot of people say to me I should be using is because I find them a lot cheaper. In the long run, they last extremely long and I have no problem with them. I am an artist on a budget. I just focus on whatever's cheap and whatever I can get a hold of. Regarding the pencils, I have Prisma colors, which are extremely expensive. Um, personally, I don't know if I'd recommend them completely. They do work out pretty well here, but for the most part, I do find that they fall apart very easily and they are a bit of a nightmare to work with. Also, I should mention they were a gift. I didn't pay for them. I mean, I would never buy Prisma colors. They are way too expensive for me. I just wouldn't pay for them at all. And I'm also using some Arteza. I really do like their pencils and they work well for what I need them to. Regarding the highlights, I selected a white pencil. Now, I think it was a watercolor pencil. Uh, just because it sat on the paper a little bit well, it was it was quite good actually. It worked a little bit better than the just standard Prismacolor pencil. And also I used a white gel pen and this was just to bring some seriously bright highlights. I had considered using my airbrush, which is something I have done in previous videos. However, I think the airbrush would take this out of the realm of being the sort of coloring book challenge and put it into a more advanced piece of artwork and it would be a little bit of a cheat because the airbrush really makes getting effects such as shadows and highlights super easy. So I didn't want to go into that because I just felt this should be relatable and this should be shown as something that is attainable to the everyday person. 
So I'm wafting on a little bit here. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to let the rest of this video play out. We are coming towards the end here, finally. And um, yeah, so I'm going to let this play out. Hey, you can sit back, relax, enjoy this. And at the end, we'll review the photos. We'll see what this really looks like. And hopefully, you do like it. So, enjoy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We are now at the end of the video. It's a sad moment, I know, but we finally made it. And here are the results, and well, I'm proud of this. I think this looks fantastic. Before we get on to actually reviewing it, I'm going to put up on screen, in order, the previous installments of the Coloring Book sessions, and I just want to see the progression as we went along, because I think that the more and more I got used to this paper, the better I got at using it. I think that especially the Lion King from last episode was... Probably the best, but then Iron Man came along this week and I think Iron Man took it. What do you think? Which has been the best so far? The more and more I use this, the more and more I get adapt to it. I am used to using higher quality sketch papers and of course Bristol board, which are my go-to papers to use when doing professional artwork. However, this is super fun pushing this paper to its limits and I'm really liking the results of this. I think that this one is one of my favorite pieces of artwork that I've done. Now that said, there are always areas that I believe I could improve on. There are areas that I believe I could have done better with. However, I will always be realistic here and just say, hey, I was using a children's coloring book. I mean, I am happy. I am super happy. And I just want to know your thoughts on this. So let me know. Now, if we throw up on screen the comparisons side by sides with the cover reference and, of course, my version of it, we can see some gaping differences in what you can achieve with a photograph. <laughs> or a digital and there's my attempt at using my pencils and markers i will let you guys at home judge on whether you think that i did a good job versus that and with that all being said i'm gonna sign off now if you did like this drawing then please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing for new updates also let me know any of your thoughts down below in the comments remember the questions of the day which were dc or marvel and of course who is your favorite character within those universes i'm adc art attack and before I go, one quick word, make sure you follow me on social medias at Twitter, ADC Art Attack, and I am now brand new to Facebook. My Facebook link will be in the description down below. Do not search my Facebook. There is someone out there with a fake account, and I will be doing my best to get that removed. The link down below is my Facebook, and there you can view some high quality images of these drawings, including this one when I post it up today. I hope you had a good time. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, I didn't forget this time. Here are the backs of every one of these coloring book sessions as highly requested by you guys.